Today we're going to be taking a look at another round of easy beginner skateboard tricks. Up first we have the fakie no comply shove it. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. As you're riding fakie, you step off with one foot and then pop the board like a fakie shove it and land back on it. You don't really need to know any other tricks before learning this one, but knowing how to do fakie shove it's would definitely help. The first thing you'll want to practice with this one is just standing still and using your back foot to scoop the tail like a shove it. This should help you get the feeling of how hard you need to scoop the board. And at this point, you should be more focused on getting the board to rotate 180 rather than popping it really hard because you actually don't need to pop the board at all for this trick if you don't want to. Once you've gotten the feeling for how hard you need to scoop it, you can start practicing the same motion except actually jumping and landing on the board. And then finally, after practicing that a bit, you can move up to actually practicing while rolling fakie. And you don't need to try to land right away. Just sort of feel out how rolling fakie adds to the momentum of your board when you shove it. And then finally, once you're comfortable with all these steps, you can put them together and try the fakie no comply shove it. Up next we have fakie frontside shove it's and nollie backside shove it's. So in my very first Easy Beginner Tricks video, I included nollie shove it's. Well this one's basically the same thing except you're reversing the direction of your shove it, which in my opinion is a little harder. For both stances of this trick, the board is going behind you rather than staying in front of you, which can make this trick a little harder at first, but once you get the feeling it's not too bad. So it definitely would be helpful if you did learn regular nollie shove it's and fakie shove it's first. This way you'll be more familiar with a little scooping motion in order to get the board to rotate. So the first thing you can do is practice this trick while standing still, which in my opinion is a little harder than practicing while rolling because you don't have the momentum going with you. Either way you practice though, it should be a similar feeling of giving the board a little push forward with your scooping foot. And to break down this concept a little further, I'm going to show you what to do with your feet. Your front foot should kind of be on the nose off to the side a little bit and your back foot can sort of just go across the whole board closer to the back bolts. So the motion for the scoop of the shove it is slightly pressing down, but mainly pushing your front foot out in front of you. And this will cause the board to rotate and do a shove it. So you can start off practicing these motions while riding nollie or fakie. And at first you can just land with one foot to try and get the feeling. And once you're comfortable with that, you just need to put this together with a little hop and you can do your nollie backside or fakie frontside shove it. For trick number three, we have the frontside 180 rewind. Now I call this a frontside 180 rewind, but it's more like a frontside 90, but either way 180 just sounds cooler. So for this one you're riding and you pop a 180, but you land on your back trucks and pivot back the way that you came. This one can feel kind of awkward at first, but it's a lot of fun to do. So really the two things you should get comfortable with first are frontside 180s or just frontside 90s and also fakie pivots. If you can already do those at least halfway well, then this one doesn't really have too many steps. You'll essentially just need to learn how to do a 180 or 90 and land on your back wheels with your tail down and then put it together with the second half of the fakie pivot. You can practice this slow at first by just awling and turning 90 and landing on your tail. And then once you're comfortable with that, you can do the same thing, but turn 90 out of it back to regular. And then finally, start trying to do these motions, except without putting your tail down, just landing on your wheels and then pivoting back. The pivot back can be a really awkward motion because your momentum's already taking you frontside, but if you don't swing your shoulders too hard frontside, the torsion of your hips turning the opposite direction should be enough to get you straightened out. Like I said, you probably won't be getting a full 180 rotation into this trick, but it's definitely fun to see how much rotation you can get before having to pivot back. Coming up next we have the freestyle finger flip. Now I actually don't know the real name for this, but I've seen it done before and it looks pretty easy and fun. For this one you start off standing still, and then you jump towards the tail of your board so that your front foot lands on the tail and the nose comes up. And then you grab the nose with your front hand, jump up and do a finger flip and land back on the board. I don't think you need to know any other tricks before learning this one, but if you do know any other weird finger flip variations, it can definitely help. So there's two main parts to this trick that you can learn separately and then put together. And the first one is jumping with your front foot to the tail. This one's not too hard, but you can kind of see that if you put too much push into the board when you jump, it can kind of go away from you. So basically just make sure that when you're jumping to the tail, you're not pushing the board away. 
After you've practiced this a few times, we can move to the next step, which is starting off in that position with your front foot on the tail and grabbing the nose and trying to do a finger flip. You don't have to try and land on the board at this point. You just want to figure out the coordination between when to jump and when to flip the board. And this can be a little tricky at first, but if you spend some time practicing finger flipping the board to see how fast it spins, then you can sort of figure out how fast you need to jump and how long you have to get back on the board. So after you've practiced these steps individually, you can try putting them all together. The hardest part about this one is definitely the finger flip and landing back on the board. But if you spend enough time doing the practice steps individually, then it shouldn't be too rough putting them all together and getting this trick down. Up next we have the old school ramp trick. Now once again, I don't know the real name for this trick, but I saw it in a skate video from the 80s, so I'm going with old school ramp trick. This one's definitely the easiest on this list. You ride up a ramp, jump off and put your feet on either side of the board, and then jump back onto the board and ride back down. You really don't need to know anything before learning this one other than being comfortable on your board. Oh, and of course you'll need some sort of ramp or incline. So the first practice step for this one is really just standing on your board and then jumping off and putting one foot on either side. And then you'll need to practice jumping on your board from that position. And besides that, really it's just being comfortable riding up and then down a ramp. So if you feel comfortable doing these steps, then find yourself the ramp, ride up it, jump so your feet are on either side, and then turn 90 and jump back on the board. This one may seem kind of dumb, but it's fun and that's what skateboarding is all about. And for our last trick we have, ride on grinds. This one is exactly what it sounds like in that you ride onto a grind rather than ollieing into it. This one can be a bit harder to find a good spot to do it on, but if you do, it's a lot of fun. Once again, you don't need to know much before learning this one other than being comfortable on your board, but having previous experience with grinds can definitely help. The main way I'd practice this one is by setting your board up on the edge of a curb so that it's in the 50-50 position and then step onto your board and get comfortable standing in the 50-50. If you've never done this, it can feel a little weird having one side of your board a little higher than the other. So just take this time to kind of feel it out and get your balance right. Now the hardest part about this trick will probably be finding a spot that you can actually do this on, but a well waxed curb cutout is probably your best bet. So practice at first by riding at a moderate speed with the edge of the ledge going up the center of your trucks so that your wheels are hanging off. If the ledge is waxed enough, then it really shouldn't feel much different than riding. So after practicing riding onto the ledge a few times, the next step is to practice getting off. And this is pretty easy and once again can be practiced while standing still in the 50-50 position. Basically, you just need to put a little pressure on your tail and then turn the board off the ledge. And if you put all these steps together correctly, you should be able to ride on, grind, and then pull off to the side. So this was just another little list of some fun, easier tricks. Sometimes as a beginner, it can be really frustrating trying to learn some of the harder tricks, which is why I try and show that there are a lot of options for easier and fun tricks, because at the end of the day, skateboarding is about having fun and staying motivated. So hopefully you find at least one thing on this list that helps you do those things. As always, I'd like to thank my Patreon pledgers for their amazing support. And I'd like to thank you for watching, and you can like and subscribe if you want.